Hey everyone, I'm Eric. This is my wife, Julie. We are The Blended Life. And tonight, we're going to be talking a little bit about relationship insecurities. Exes and stepkids. That's oh. what it's all about. All right. All right. So, where do you even want to start us off? Um, if we just dive right into it. This week, we're talking again all about our um, listeners' questions and situations that they have. And we got a lot to get to, so we'll just get right to it. We do, we do. We do. Okay. Um, next week, exciting, though, we're going to have a guest on. Okay. We're going to have Brooke on. Are we? Yes. <laughs> I talked and confirmed with her. Okay. I mean, she said she would, so now I put it out there. She has to. Okay, I or like she'll it. she'll look like an asshole now if she doesn't. Ooh. Well, here we go. We're starting it off. Um, no, but Brooke will be on. She's a, a listener. She's a bonus mom herself. And um, I think she has a really a lot of good insight for you women who or men who are not married yet and trying to navigate the blended family life, not married and, you know, trying to step up and step back and step in and step for, you know, all the way. So I'm excited to have her on next week. So you're not going to want to miss that. OK, awesome. that's going to be exciting. All right. Yeah. Where are we starting off? All right. So first question of the night, um, a listener wrote in and asks, the ex wants to meet me, and I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> uh-huh. <So> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> My boyfriend thinks it will get her off his back since her reasoning is she wants to know who her child is spending so much time with. But I think we all know why she wants to meet me to size me up. Um, what are your thoughts? Should we meet? Um, see, it's funny because we live in a small town. Where everyone already so knows each so other. So this is so unnecessary. <laughs> Everyone's already <laughs> sized each other up, right? Everyone knows who everyone's step parents are and exes are. And, you know, in our town, I don't know if we run across this a lot. What do you think? I mean, it sounds like she's getting pressured from her boyfriend to do this to get an ex off his back mm -hmm. about it. Um, well, I get the wanting to meet and um, see who your ex is having your children hang out with. But at the same time, and we've talked about this before, if you're not comfortable with this and this is something you don't want to do, it, you don't have to. Like, she doesn't have any right to tell your boyfriend who he spends his time with, who he has his kid around. You know what I mean? Like, that's not that's not the ex's no, choice anymore. No, but it's funny that he is entertaining this. Oh, I see what you're saying. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, right. if my ex came to me and was demanding that he meet you, mm -hmm. I'd like there's some sand go pound on it <laughs> you know I mean unless there was a real concern or you know we were you know super friendly although I will say okay however in our situation all of our exes and we all know each other right. from not because family yeah life. because we're a small town yeah so my ex did ask in the beginning for me to go meet with his friend at the time. Okay. Um, because he really did want us to get along, and I did go, and I did do that. Mm -hmm. um, and was that the beginning? I feel like that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> or is this another time? Okay, okay. So there was a <laughs> beginning, and then one yeah, like it was, a year or so ago? Yeah, it was okay. in the very beginning. They were friends. I don't even know if they had... It was the very, very beginning, and I was asked to do that, and I I did it, um, and was it a fruitful interaction? Not really. Um, if both hearts aren't genuinely about creating a connection, I don't know how fruitful the relationship is going to be. Was it, Was it you that your heart wasn't in it, like you were just not about it, or... Or was it her not in it, or maybe both of you not in it? How do you, like what? What's um, your take on it? Well, I can't speak for her. Um, I don't know what her intentions or feelings were at the time. Um, but I mean, you know, we all have a lot of history, and I, 
I just wasn't in a place where I was ready to see her differently than how I learned her beforehand. Does that make sense? Are you, yeah. Are you? So it was my issue, and I think I I went definitely with a lot of preconceived notions. You know, are I you in a place open. now where you could. Or are you still like, I just don't care enough? Oh. Wow. I'm just, I'm, <laughs> sorry, I've been watching the news. <laughs> this is I'm like, some how, shit. Can a news, I'm... how can a news reporter be a good news reporter? <laughs> Ask the hard questions. I guess so. <laughs> um, am I in a place now? I'm in a place now where my feelings, my personal feelings don't matter. She's an excellent stepmom to my children, and that's all that matters. My kids have a very different experience with her than I had. Right. Prior to them, you know, prior to their dad and I divorcing. So I feel like I'm able to compartmentalize things a little bit. Like, <laughs> I'm a real boy. I'm a man. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm a waffle. I've done it. I'm able to put my personal feelings over here because from day one till present, she's never given me any reason to dislike her or take pause, or she's been an excellent stepmom. My kids love her, and right. I always say that on here, but my kids love her, and I think that just makes it easier for me to accept. And so I I tend not to want to interact because I want it to stay good, right? Like, I don't I don't want my personal well, and, feelings to get well, in the way of my respect thing. Like for her. You guys have had the, the blended family... Uh, mm-hmm. miscommunications and squabbles, but you haven't let that push you back from the beginning of time, right? So I feel like there there was a time where you guys basically became, like, like you're like, all right, here's the line. I'm drawing this. This is going to be a clean slate. Like, I'm over the past. It's the past. Mm-hmm. You know, we have all gone our separate ways, and you mm-hmm. drew that line. Now, there's been a couple or a few or a dozen or I mean it's a blended family it doesn't run perfectly as we all know right yeah you know you guys have had your little issues but you haven't let that be like oh no that's we're going way back behind this line again right Mm -hmm. like you're like all right it's it is what it is and I'm going to keep learning and building from this yeah and no matter no matter what I always look to my kids for the temperature of the situation so if they're happy healthy well adjusted like I never That's have, good I never have problems with my kids going to their dad's house. I never have them throwing a fit, crying. I don't want to go. I don't like dad. I don't like my stepmom. They're mean. I don't like my step siblings. Like I never get an ounce of pushback, and I really haven't ever. I don't think you. You ever haven't ha- ever seen that either. No, I'm like uh, maybe once, but it wasn't because of something like that. It was like <laughs> it was like something. There's s- a game here. Yeah, exactly. It, it was, was something, something silly. Stupid. Like like no, I want to continue mm-hmm. to play my video games. Yep. <laughs> so. so that also is like the litmus test of what I. I, cause I don't live in their house. I don't know. My issues go back, you know, 15 years. I don't know. I don't, I don't know their family. I don't know who they are today. Well, and a lot changes in 15 years. I'm not who I was 15 years ago. Yeah. I mean, you're not who you were three years ago. (laughs) 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 Oh, he's got to make jokes. So, but I, you know, so I think that's good. Like, you know, if you, if you look to your kids and they're happy, healthy, well-adjusted, let it be, let it go. Don't, car- you know, I just, but that doesn't mean you have to have coffee and meet up and, you know, unless there's stuff to be talked about. I'm just uninterested in forming a relationship with this woman personally. And that might be And her. that's okay. This might be the listener also who's just like, I'm not interested in any of this. You know what? And if yeah. you're not right now, if this isn't a bridge you're willing to cross, maybe you will be later and let your boyfriend know like, Hey, I'm not ready right now, but you know, let's, let's talk about this again in six months from now and just see where it's at, you know, or a year from now uh, or don't even set a timeline. Let's, you know, let's just give it some time Yeah, and, and I'll cross it when I'm ready. And that's very interesting too, because time is time and God, right? Because the second time I met up with my kid's stepmom and I mean, I reached out to her because God put it on my heart to meet up with her. And I remember, like, for a good solid week, I was fighting with God about it, right? Like, it was on my heart, like, you should go meet with her. And I'm like, why? I don't want to. Like, my kids are happy. We're, like, what? what's, there's no point. We didn't have issues to go hash out. Right. I didn't have an agenda to go, like, 
meet up with her and bring stuff to the table. I, I want nothing from her, you know? And so I ended up reaching out and I told her that I'm like, listen, it's on my heart to meet up with you. And that was the meeting that you are talking about where okay. it was like, we're just going to put it to rest, like move forward. Um, and I remember because when she met up with me, we met at a coffee shop, a local coffee shop. And I just saw on her face, like she saw me and she's like, what do you want? It was that like, she came already. <laughs> Why are you like, disturbing me? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, what do you want? And I'm like, listen, like, I just don't have an agenda. Like, this was put on my heart. And we ended up talking for three and a half hours. Yeah, like, I called and you're was all, are like you alive? checking in with you. <laughs> like, yeah, do I need to go looking for a body or? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we ended up talking for three and a half hours. And it was bumpy at some points because some things we had to agree to disagree about. And that's fine. Um, but, you know, I walked away from that meeting just also grateful that she is so involved with my kids. Like they, they're, you know, I know she's an involved, caring stepmom and that's really all I could ask for. Um, and so that kind of just reaffirmed my like, okay, you know, everything's great. Everything's good. Um, again, that didn't feel a need to be friends, didn't feel a need to, um, a lot of people use their ex's, um, new spouse is like, like a lot of women will start communicating and a lot of dads and stepdads will communicate. So they right. cut the X out and it's like bio step parent. That's a thing. Right. Do you know what I'm talking about? I see what you're Am I making sense? Yeah. It makes sense in my head. Yes. I just don't know if I'm getting across, but I didn't feel like a need for that where it's like I'm, and I, um, Brooke will be a good one next week that she can talk about this a lot because she feels like her boyfriend's ex finds it easier to communicate directly with her than through and the they, boyfriend. And they do communicate well, right? Yeah. I mean, it's unemotional, right? They have yeah. no history. They have no history. Right. They are strangers. Well, it's an interesting, so too, just to kind of give you guys a short little preview. Um, Brooke is someone who is a step parent, but not technically a step parent. She is in one of these situations where she's been dating a guy for years and years who has twin daughters who she has um, been in their life now and, and helping to raise and, you know, playing that stepmother role without actually being the stepmother. Uh -huh. um, so she's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, um, but also has dealt with a lot of the same things that we all do without the exact same title. So it's kind of an interesting situation and um, I'm excited to have her on. She's, She's one of those people that, like, I feel like will have a lot of insight and isn't afraid to talk the truth. Yeah, so. she's gonna be, she's gonna be so, so, so awesome here. So, um, so our advice, I guess, I mean, obviously, the ex wants to meet you to know who you are, to what make you sure smell you're, like. I don't <laughs> know. I kind of feel like I, I see both sides. Of I course, I see like. Just go and get it over with, especially if you're going to be in this child's life and your boyfriend's life forever. You know, what's the big deal? Like, go put meet in a public place. <laughs> a very public place. If she's con yeah. con uh, what's confrontational. The, confrontational, I'll just say controversial. Well, yes, confrontational. And here's the thing, too. If you agree to go and meet the it, – it, it kind of is a, a rip off the Band-Aid moment that – you know, you're going to, if you're going to be in this child's life and you're going to be in this blended family life forever, you're going to have to cross paths with the ex at some point. So meeting can be good just to rip off that bandage. So it's not awkward. You can say, Hey, you have some basis for connection. Um, and remember just because you're meeting up with, with your boyfriend or spouse's ex, you don't have to stay there for longer than you're comfortable. Yeah, At maybe, any point, you can pull the plug and be well, like, I got to go. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You you do like, <laughs> you put your phone on, uh, like turn your phone on, call like a best friend who's kind of just hiding around the corner and maybe with like a getaway van and put your phone on so your best friend can hear you and then have like a safe <laughs> word. You know, a safe word a or like the word. bad date you go on. You have a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Like you like, text them a code word and they're like, oh, you no, have you an don't emergency. Text. They have to be listed. This has to be real time. Like oh, there's no delay God. because if you're in, yeah, if you're in harm's way, you have a code word <laughs> and you're like, you're like code word sunshine, you know, you're like, yeah, well, you know, 
it is really the, the sun is really sunshine today and then your friend just comes zooming up in the minivan and like pulls you out of harm's way and you're off yeah. you know so okay right. good advice so you go <laughs> and you don't have to stay longer than necessary don't go for a meal go for coffee um you know and i have to go i have an appointment or i have somewhere to be you know the the second or i'm being kidnapped by him person in a minivan (laughs) or the second it starts going sideways right the second like there's an argument or whatever like um you can just say I'm done like I don't I don't want to engage like I don't want to do this anymore like let's agree to disagree and I'm gonna go ahead and go thank you for meeting up with me and exit and I think that it if you can do that if you're this is really important to your boyfriend or your significant other for you to go have this meet up you know, put on your big girl pounties. Your pounties? Your pounties. <laughs> your pounties. Your put on geez, your what were you just watching before this? <laughs> Hallmark. Go put on your big girl panties and go meet. Do this one big favor for your significant other. Show up for them in a way that is meaningful to them. And then it's kind of like you don't have anything to do for the rest of the year. Like there's, you've done it. You've blown your And one your of those watch. things too, if you're going to meet up with the ex, don't do it with your significant other. And I suggest that because you're going to end up getting put into a situation where they have history. They have stuff to talk about. There's going <laughs> to, there, you know, there, someone's going to constantly be talking and you might get, you might turn into that third wheel or you might get put into like a weird situation that no one means for it to begin with. But it might just be one of those things where they have talked before. They have a kid together. They have chemistry. So it's easy for them to talk where you don't have any history. You have nothing really that you want to even talk about or or talk, you know. It, it's just one of those things that might just turn into a, a weird or awkward or bad situation. So yeah. I'd suggest if you're going to meet, just meet one-on-one. And, you know, that way you guys both have the same level of awkwardness and anxiety. And, um, you know, there's just, there's not more dynamic to that. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, so I would say go do it. I was going to come on here and be like, don't do it. But I'm like, I, I think it if it's really important to your significant other, then I think you have to step up and at least try. And if it fails, then you never have to do it again, you know, or, um, but it may not. Like, also, it has a 50-50 shot. Like, if it goes well, that's just best for the kids and mm-hmm. awesome. If it goes horribly, then you know what to expect and that informs your decisions moving forward. Um, and so it's a good, it's, it's a good test the waters opportunity. If, and let, and if you're not sticking around, then forget it. Right. Like what's the point? Right. Don't do that to yourself. If you're just going to be gone in six months. Yep. That's true. Okay. Question number two. Drum, oh, I was going to drum roll it. All right. This is a topic we've actually talked on a lot. And so we will try to give more, give more. Give more on? Give more on it. Um, So here's the question. I'm wondering if you can share some more insight on insecurities between your spouse and their ex. My spouse feels that it is important for everyone to open, be open, and get along. I feel that all of it is lacking boundaries and lacks respect in our relationship and just makes me feel insecure. This is one of our biggest obstacles. We can't agree on things, and he thinks I'm being very stern and unnecessary, and I think that he needs to put boundaries in place because the line of old relationship and new relationship is kind of blurry. What are your thoughts? Build a wall. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Dear God, we're going to, like, get hate mail now. (laughs) It could go either way at this point. Um I honestly, I think, you know, and I talk about this every single week, there needs to be more discussion. It needs to be the reasons why you're feeling insecure, what type of boundaries, what the boundaries look like. And again, um, not pointing the fingers because you do this, because you're doing this, you know, because of you, because of me, make it about yourself, make it about your situation, you know, let your spouse know, like, this is how I'm feeling this is what's going on. Like, this is the way I see it. Um, this is how I would be more comfortable, you know, and go from there, see how that starts. Um, but again, reflect upon yourself and kind of figure out why are you feeling this way? You know, what are things that are being done and really know what the situation is. Be it, be a, um, an investigator 
you know, the homicide investigator. We've all watched those TV shows, right? And before you go and have the conversation, already know all the answers. Know why you feel this way. Don't sit there and have a conversation um, with your spouse while you're trying to figure out your emotions because that's just going to create more emotion, right? And I, and I find us doing that it's quite confusing. a bit. It's confusing. Yeah. Well, because you're working through things. Like we're doing right now on the podcast. Like um, all of our longtime listeners, you guys know this. This isn't <laughs> pre-recorded or, or, you know, pre-scripted and figured out. Like we have some topics. Julie usually figures them out. I put them on the YouTube without usually reading them or I'll glance through and I'll, and I'll create a topic. But at the end of the day, like we both sit down here and not like you came with the first question, you thought you were going to say something totally different. So we're yeah. working through this. Not the best way to do with your spouse when you have <laughs> uh, really though, when you have yeah. like a big problem, you're like, I need to work through this and I need you to participate in this already know your feelings and how you want to work through this, you know? Yeah, that's really good advice. You have to figure out what it is and understand that you're going to get pushback from your spouse. And it's really hard when you're in the middle of your ex and your spouse also, right? Talk about that. That that can't be a very comfortable place because obviously, you know, in kind of like the first topic, you know, you're going to become that third wheel. You're going to be, you know, in a place where you're like, well, why aren't they together or um, why did they ever break up? And, and is he thinking about going back to her or, um, you know, just all the feels mm. and a lot of it is usually just manufactured in our own minds. It's never what your spouse is thinking. It's never what the intentions are. A lot of times, you know, it's, it's us just trying to keep the situation under control mm-hmm. and, and, and calm and just, you know, peaceful. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those things like don't manufacture bad feelings that don't really exist. Yeah. And here's a really good thing when you're trying to work through feelings and you're trying to work through like insecurity, we'll take that word, right? Um, If you could take out a piece of paper and you need to be as specific as possible, um, write the list of every single thing that makes you feel insecure, like create your evidence list as specific as you can. And if you can't get super specific, that should tell you a lot right there. Um, And if you can, if you have like front and back of 10 pages of specific things like inappropriate conversations, um, meetups that you find about out about later, weird pictures that aren't with the kid. Like if there are causation for like real specific causations for you to be insecure, then that's a whole nother topic conversation conversation like, you're gonna have yeah um and a lot of times you can put yourself into check by writing it down when you visualize your feelings on paper it's very different than when you're feeling them like your visual senses take over and it puts things in perspective it actually can shift your perspective it's a very interesting exercise you know if you're feeling jealous or insecure or angry or frustrated, or you're not trusting a situation, whatever the negative piece is, start writing. Well, and a lot of times, too, those feelings will get very heightened in the time when it's happening, you know, or, um, you know, just when you're when you're in the mix of all of it, you know, you write this stuff down, you come back to it in a day or two or a week, whatever. And you're like, I don't feel that way anymore. You know, I was really angry at the time or mm-hmm. really hurt at the time. But now that I've processed it, it I, I'm not as affected anymore. Or it could be the vice, vice versa. And you're just like, I am way angrier now. Like, that's way worse than I even let it be, you know, or more has surfaced since then. You know, I come to find out the picture, you know, that those that the kids aren't in that you're in with them. The kids weren't even there. Like, I'm way more angry now, you know, so <laughs> it can go different ways. But, oh dear. you know, it's it's one thing to write them down and, and come back to it a little bit later. Right. Yeah. And um, also with insecurities. It could also, like, the thing with men and women, right? We're just wired so differently. Says Mrs. Waffles over here. (laughs) And we also have very different perspective and ideas. So it could just be you and your spouse are at an impasse, right? Like, 
He wants things to be one way. They make you uncomfortable. And you kind of just have to have the conversation of compromise, right? Like you need to honor what your spouse wants, you know, honor that he wants things to be open for a reason. You know, he wants everyone to get along for a reason. Well, why is that so important to him? You know, you need to get, you know, his why underneath the why. Like, why is it so important that everyone gets along? Like, maybe go explore that deeper with your significant other. And when you do, you might be able to connect with something and that makes you more empathetic to the situation and to your spouse. And that calms your insecurities down, you know, um, because again, that's very general. I just want everyone to get along. Well, fuck, I want world peace. Okay? <laughs> Can't we all just get along? You know? Delayed beep out. There it so, is. So so I think it's super important when your spouse really wants something from you that makes you feel that it's not easily given. It's super important to go dig deeper. Ask questions. Get curious. Why? And not attack, but like right. really curious. Like, well, why is this so important to you? Maybe he has, high, you know, a childhood trauma that his parents put his head in the vice and he can't get, I don't know what it is, but it could be something and you're like, that's real. like, okay, like this is super important. You're, this is more important than my insecurities or it's explaining why this is so important to you. Now I don't feel insecure about it. Um, so that's another way to help calm yourself down is just to get curious about why your spouse is the way they are or thinks the way they think and if you cannot get on the same page agree to disagree and move on don't let an ex ruin your marriage never yeah. right like don't no. let insecurities or you know it's super easy for exes to snake their way in in some way into your home into your parenting and to even friendships, if you know people who know them and you're in a small town or even into your marriage. And it's just really important that you you protect your marriage and your relationship. And nothing should be more important than that. Not the ex's accusations or comments or questions or, you know, like that is that is second to your marriage and to your family. So I think priorities also... Um, you need to not allow your insecurities about somebody who doesn't matter outside of the ex doesn't matter outside of being a parent, like on any level. Yeah. Right. Like I think also know that like the ex will only have as much power as you allow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, you know, if, if the ex is able to get in and be a part of your, your dinner conversation and your before bed conversation, and your wake up morning conversation and all of a sudden like oh our ex is kind of living with us you know and who like wants why? that you know Nobody yeah exactly wants that. so like you shouldn't be thinking about like they have no they have no power they have no purpose they have no except place. for like you, except for like you said like they have power when it comes to parenting with they the have power kids. when it comes to <laughs> to the children and decision making yes. for Absolutely. their children mm -hmm. like that's all that's it. very important and also, don't forget that. I feel like a lot of people forget that. Like when the kids go into the other home and it's all of a sudden like, wow, now I have no power over my kids. Don't be that parent. Like help your kids lead the best possible life, you know, and that is by um, keeping things good and joining the other parents, respecting the other parents, mm -hmm. you know, like making them part of the conversation mm -hmm. and the decision making and anything that you would like to be a part of you can count on them most likely wanting to be a part of right right and I think that bio parents in the home so in this case would be the significant other um ne like everyone kind of just needs to let go of all these bullshit ideals we have about blended families and everyone getting along and there's like friends and we're all ha celebrating birthdays together and Christmases together and joint grad like w like that's great if you can do On that. A Hallmark movie. That's that's a wonderful ideal if that is something you can live up to. I would say ninety percent of us that like this is never going to happen. Well, so here's the thing too: you might be able to live up to, but can your spouse live up to that? Can 
the right. ex live up to that? Can your ex's spouse live up to that? You know what I mean? There's like, Does everybody want the uh, same thing? What about thing? the kids? Like, are the kids comfortable with this? So there's a lot more than just mm-hmm. what you feel. You know, like, yeah, I could totally yeah. go to dinner with my ex all the time. But how does my wife feel about that? Well, how does how does your my ex's, ex's husband feel about that? How do our kids feel about that? You know, like there's a lot more than just you. Let's stop being selfish, people. That is true. There's a lot more people at play, but I just I would like to point out that th- that y- you know exes are exes for a reason, and really it's about the kids. Outside of the kids, they don't who they're no one to you. Outside You're a the nobody. Kids. Well, like yeah. really, they they're nobody. Yeah, yeah. Stop making. But don't them treat somebody. them like they're a nobody. But oh. but don't treat them. You know, don't <laughs> make them a part of your. <laughs> I'm just trying to <laughs> to soften it up a bit here. Oh. You don't have to be like they're a nobody. Like if I saw them on the side of the I'm road, I'm trying I'd... to help people who are feeling insecure. <laughs> like why? Like why? Right. Other than the kid that the like. Yeah. Or nobody. No, you're, no, you're right on. You're completely true. I, Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Okay, we're going full. Bl- <laughs> we're going full black and white here tonight, people. <laughs> All right. Next question. I, ho- I, you know, if you have more specific questions on insecurities, and I, we did not answer this. I don't. <laughs> She's know the one to ask you guys. <laughs> no, like, just, no, not even like. like oh. Email us specific questions. It's a. It general questions at this point are really hard because I feel like we've talked about this a lot on our podcast. It's a common theme, so that's good to know. At least you're not alone in feeling insecure. But we'll, we will always continue to try to answer them and help you. We're not yes. going to just be like, we already talked about this, like, move we'll on. We'll try. You know? I we, just hope that yeah. we're not redundant and people aren't like, shut the fuck up. Hey, but you know what? There's a beat for you. Um, you. At the end of the day, yeah. we really, like, we talked, uh, we just mentioned things that we've never talked about before, even though we've talked about this before, so. Yeah. It's just. A new conver- a same conversation, new, a new day, and hopefully you got something. Maybe out. we've but grown. Maybe we've given better advice this time. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? All right, moving on. Um, how to handle when your stepchild is jealous of you and your relationship with their parent? What can you do to help them through and support your spouse in the process? And w- I'm not going to read the whole situation. I'll just leave it at that because. I have a book that I want to recommend. She asked for a book recommendation and actually, as so happens, we got one in the mail. So it's kind of the perfect. Like the same time? Well, we've had it for like a couple weeks. Right. But I mean like close enough. It's not like it has dust on it and it's been sitting on the shelves for a long time. So kind of perfect. We're going to show you the book. You're going to have an opportunity to get this book from us as a little giveaway situation. Okay. So, but let's answer the question and then we'll promote the book. Okay. Okay. I like it. Um, so how to handle when your stepchild is jealous of you and your relationship with the other parent. So this isn't parent jealousy. This is, kid this is the jealousy. kid being jealous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I need a lead on this one. You need a lead. I, I don't deal with this a lot. I feel like if anything, you deal with this more than I do. You know, and I don't know if it's a jealousy thing, but you have you have more of a, an abrasive relationship with, say, my son than mm-hmm. I do with your son or your daughter. You know, like mm-hmm. you guys, um, not really you guys, but the situation isn't like the unicorn situation where, you know, he's just like, can I call you mom? And, you know, he Mm-mm. love and respects his mom very much. And, mm-hmm. um you know, it's never been a thing, but at the end of the day, he wants to be with me all the time, even if it's with you, you know, he when I went to, to be you. with you all the time, whether he's with anyone else, mm, not necessarily. He's getting older now though, where I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go shoot today. You know, I'm going to go film. I say, I call it shooting. I'm going to go film today. You want to go with me? Not nah, dad. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. dang it, man. I've been doing a lot of stuff alone lately and it's, it's kind of a bummer, you know, Aww. so, but because that goes from like, he's always been with me, you know, a hundred percent of the time and not, I mean, not, it's a, it's a metaphor <laughs> or whatever you call it. He's always with me. It feels like, you know, um, and doing stuff with me to now he's just like, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't care as much. I'd rather be doing stuff. But the cool thing is like tonight and I kind of, I, I didn't push back on him. He was really like, he was in a tournament with like his favorite player of all time, like 
he idolizes this kid, Phase High's guy. Tell everyone what he was playing. Oh, the great game of Fortnite, you guys. <laughs> um, but so he was playing with like one of the biggest pro players and they had their whole crew together and they played like literally up until the minute that we went live. So, um, I, and, you know, you can't give your kids pushback for stuff like that. You know, it's like, well, you know, I get it. I was that kid once, you know, I'd be out skating and we'd meet up at the spot and, you know, some pros would be there and one decides that, Hey, we're going to be good buddies, you know? And that actually happened to me when I was younger, you know, one of the, the pros, Jake Elliott, he became a lifelong friend, you know, and we built computers together and made videos together. The first computer I ever built was with mm. this pro Jake and we were good buddies and he was a little bit older than me. So I'd wake up in the morning and go to high school, you know, and I only had a couple of classes in and then come back home. He'd be editing on something. And, mm-hmm. um, then we'd go out and we'd film, you know, yeah. stay up all night and mm-hmm. it just, you know, it's fun, you know? So getting to, getting to live those type of things where, you know, like, man, I've always wanted to meet this person and now they're my friend. Like, I'm not going to ruin that for him just to go shoot some, some video with lazy old dad here. So anyways, okay, then. Silence. Okay. Um, yeah, I think with kids and I was a step child my whole life since I was one year old. So I have some experience with this. Uh, I don't know if I was ever. Say hi to Ashley while you think about your. Hi, Ashley. I'm trying to Ashley. answer this from a kid's perspective as a step kid. You kind of feel. I don't know. Like, I, here's the deal. Step kids are smart. Right. It's not like we're trying to play pretend where stepmom is actual mom and stepdad's actual dad. Like step kids aren't smarter than bio kids. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like it, people treat step kids as if they're like special. Right. Or yeah. not in tune with reality or they just treat them differently. <laughs> or I feel like there's so many unrealistic expectations put on step kids and step parents, too. There's a lot of pressure there. Well, so yeah, there's I a lot of perfect expectations. Mm, yeah, so here's the deal. I've And I've said this on this podcast before. You know, genetics plays a huge part in bonding, right? Growing your child in your belly, um, p- pushing them out, breastfeeding your oh. vagina. Oh. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, all the things that it matters, right? And if you adopt, then being a part of the adoption process and searching for this kid and getting to know them and and the struggle of starting out, like when you're legally and biologically part of a kid's life and you chose that, um, it's, it matters. And so when you are a step parent or a step kid to expect an immediate bond as if you were a normal parent, like kids understand that too. And I think we don't give kids enough credit. Like we expect kids to be like, this is mommy's friend and you, you have to embrace that. Why we expect kids to do that is beyond me. Why we expect step, like there needs to be, and this is what I've always said here on our podcast, right? There needs to be respect. So that's where you start. You know, we, everyone respects everyone in our home. You know, we're not mean, we're respectful. Right. And things grow from there or not. You know, not every step parent, step child relationship is going to be amazing. Well, you know what? The other end, the other side of that coin too, is I feel like a lot of people, at least at the beginning, um, they also expect their biological kid to dislike the other parent, the step parent, their exes. There's a lot of weird expectations. You know what I mean? It's one of those things like, I don't like them. Sorry. My kids better not like them. You know? And I think we have, Mm. we've softened up a lot from that where I'm like, I don't care if my, my kids like Mm -hmm. my ex's husband. Like, but you hope for that, right? Ho- like well, that's well, at their first, that's best what I'm interest. saying. Though. At first, yeah. you don't hope for that. You're like, I would never want them to like them or be, you know, you kind of team up. And it's like, no, it's in their best interest. Like you're just saying yeah. for them to like them and, right. and vice versa for, for the ex's new spouse to like your kids, because that only leads to a happier, healthier lifestyle for that's your right. kids. Your kids are ultimately 
going to be better because of that. That's right. You know, you don't want them to have a hatred relationship with the other side. No, that's not good for them, and it's not really good for anyone. You know, that does ripple out to everyone else's lives when it's difficult. Um, So with stepkids, like, I just think it needs to be okay if relationships are hard. Or if relationships not disrespectful, that's a different thing. That's a parenting issue. But if things aren't bonded and naturally clicking and we're not just embracing each other, you know, personalities are very different. You know, um, when you're parallel parenting um, in your home, so we get in, we get written in a lot, and this is something that Eric and I have shared what a lot. What do you mean by parallel parenting? Okay, parallel parenting is opposite of co-parenting. Oh, it's like in, in your house, like me and you parenting. But I'm using it in our house. So, okay. like, here's something that we hear a lot about, and Eric and I struggle with, and we share this openly, so whatever, it's out there. Um, I don't work with males because I used to be one. We parent differently. We, How you and your ex parent your child is different than how my ex and I parent our children. Oh, it's not bad or wrong. It's just different. But with it, the more, here's what I'm trying to say. The more differences there are, the harder it is to connect and bond with kids. And for kids to connect and bond with you. And that's something that's not talked about ever. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone actually talk about this. But it just makes connection harder because everyone's on a different page. And if you're on different pages, like I know my dad is the end all be all in my house. Like that's where I'm going to go because he's the disciplinarian. He's the reward. He's the permission slip, he's the nurturer, he's the, you know, outside of food and laundry, whatever. Then it makes connection a little bit more difficult. It's, it's a little bit harder of a thing to do. Also, if you don't have things in common, that makes it harder. So I think that you have to really, like, give kids a break And be okay, like, if you're going to be a step-parent, it's a risk you take, right? It's a risk you take. You're not marrying the kid. You're marrying your spouse. I mean, there's weird situations (laughs) where you could, but... You're not marrying your kid. You're marrying your spouse. And kids grow up and get a life of their own, God willing. Yeah, hopefully. So, um, but you need to have respect. And you need to, let like, understand that if kids are jealous, you know, I have had to really, I guess in our situation, like you discussed earlier, was just to, I accept that your son needs you and wants you, and I'm not competing. Right. Like, also, don't give your kids reason to be jealous. Like, it shouldn't be a competition for attention. I never wanted that, because I was a stepkid, and I remember, like, being the third wheel or feeling like, you know, because I grew up with my stepdad and my mom, and I was an only child in our home, so it was three all the time, and that was really difficult because I was the only kid, and my stepdad and I were never super close, ever, and my mom and I were really close, but my mom was married to my step. It's like a weird, you know, she always felt in the middle of my stepdad and me, And so, and I remember how that made me feel as a kid. It wasn't jealousy. It was just like, it was annoying. I I never felt, you know, maybe they were, it was jealousy. I didn't know it. So I just try to like, I think one of the best things you can do to help your kid is be empathetic. Like try to put yourself in their shoes. Come at it more of a heart of, if I were my stepchild right now, what you know, how are they feeling? What do they want? Um, And be sensitive to that and come at it from that and give space and give time. Everyone wants to give up when it doesn't click right away or six months in, it's not better. Well, things take years. You know, if, if a kid has issues, it takes however many years it, you know, issues build to unravel and it doesn't at the happen end of it, overnight are you no longer a step kid you said you were a step kid <laughs> i'm still a step isn't kid. being a step kid a lot like being an alcoholic oh once gosh. you're a step kid always a step kid yeah i'm a giant stepchild <laughs> yeah. 
So I think that what is one thing that can help you out is just to give time, space, patience, empathy, come at it from a place of like ex- just trying to put yourself in their shoes. Um, and also, if you need help, like go talk to a life coach, a counselor, someone, you know, sometimes you have to spitball with somebody else that isn't immediately involved in your situation and it brings things a little bit clearer into perspective sometimes kids need a safe place to go talk and get when it out can people hire you to be a life coach <laughs> in april in april well in i'm april. actually coaching now but that's oh. fine okay so you guys need a life coach i know one. Oh dear god send an email so i was asked if there were any books to like books for children to help with this and if i butcher this is one of our listeners who wrote this, and actually California girl. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so her name is Tamar Burris. Yes? Am I saying that right? Uh, no, no, there's no S. Oh, yes, I'm looking at the illustrated by. Sorry. Okay. Yes, I believe so. All right. I apologize. Either way, it's, the illustrated is yeah. pretty cute, too. It's a kid's book. It's called A New Special Friend, and... I don't know. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, it's going to be out of focus, but put it by where your face is. Put it by my but face. Yes. But it's super cute. It's super cute. It's about a fox and this fox. You just that back. What's that back say? Little fox is used to his parents being divorced, but now his dad has a special friend. Will dad still want to be with him? And will mom be upset? Soon Little Fox discovers that it is A-OK for Donna to be his friend, too. So this is a super cute um, children's book. And actually, I think oh, I think she's also a life coach as well. Oh, neat. Um, anyway, so my daughter read this um, when it came in, and she loved it. And, and she she's was 10 like, years old. She's 10. She read it. She sat down and saw it on the kitchen counter and was like, what is this? And she said that we have to, like, share it and that it would help other kids. And so how do I say no to my sweet girl? Um, So this is a great book. And what I love about kids' books and children's books is that what is written in here is very clear and succinct, but it provides opportunity to ask questions. Or for kids to, like, if you read, you know, the more you read it, the more it might come up. And books are a great way to start conversations um, and to plant seeds. And, I mean, mean, granted, mom, little fox goes to his mom and is like, is it okay for me to like Donna? And I will let you read the book to find out what little fox's mom says. She say a lot more than ding, 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 ding. Oh. Dear Lord. <laughs> she did. Um, so, I mean, this is a very, like, we all wish our lives could be this book and this easy. But I think it's a really great opportunity for kids to put their minds at ease, for kids to feel like they have permission to be okay with. It's not so scary. Yeah. Um, so get this book. Where and can we get this book? Do you know? Did you ask? I am um, Amazon. Okay. That's. Yeah. I think I that's all we need to know right there. <laughs> Tamara is on our um, Instagram live. Hi, Tamara. So. Um, Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. And so I think I might be able to coax a, um, a signed copy to Ooh. give away. I don't know. We're still working on that. Okay. <laughs> but I will give away this book um, to one of our listeners. Please just go follow us on Instagram and then comment I'll post a picture of this book on our Instagram page. Comment below um, one thing you liked from tonight's podcast under this book. And then I will have my daughter, we'll film it. She won't be here on Thursday nights. I don't have her. But we'll film her and play it, and she will draw a name, and we'll mail this book to you. We'll announce the winner next week on our podcast. So all you have to do is find this picture on our Instagram page, comment below and let us know something you enjoyed or liked or like an aha moment you got from our podcast. And then next Thursday, everyone who um, 
commented below this picture and is following us, um, we'll put your name into a container of some sort. I'll have my daughter draw a name and we'll mail this book out to you. It's an awesome, awesome, awesome. And the illustrations are so cute. cute. Anyway, so that's that. I love it. All right. I love it. Thank you. And thank you for reaching out to us tomorrow. This is awesome. And please, if you have a child who's jealous in your home, also don't beat yourself up over that. It's natural. It's normal. It happens a lot. Kids of divorce have a, a lot of feelings that they are, um, that they're working through. And they don't know how to even another great thing about children's books, right? They don't know how to work through them because they've never done it before. Kids are blank slates, and we forget that quite often. Well, we're the ones that do all the drawing on them. Yes. Like, it's us that that form them. And real quickly, Ashley says, it's in her cart. Yay, Ashley, get this book. That's exciting. How fun. So exciting. Um, So I think it's super important to understand that kids need a script, Books are great. Parents need a script. Parents need books. Like, if we could all behave like Mama Fox in this book, um, when our kids come to us, that's a great lesson for Aren't us. Aren't you as Mama well. Foxy? Oh, 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 oh. oh. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so if again, if we didn't hit specifically on a question you had, please email or write in about jealousy. This last question we're gonna get to. I'm going to read the entire thing. It's going to take me a minute. Bear with me. Well, good. We have only a few left. Okay. Oh, dear. It's a page and a half. Is it? Yeah, but it's... it's Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go, you guys. Advice desperately needed. How can I say no to that? Oh. So my boyfriend and I have been together for about a year and a half. We live together. He has an 11-year-old daughter... I have a four-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter. So she, he has one daughter, 11, and she has a four-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter. Our relationship has been very rocky after six plus months of me asking. We finally just started couples counseling. Kudos. Yeah, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. Never a bad thing. That's right. One of the larger larger issues we have dealt with is his parenting and the kids. One issue I brought up in the other day in couples counseling is the problem I have with his 11-year-old daughter sleeping in our bedroom whenever she stays at our house. Yep, I'd be like, nope. You would? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Especially at 11, I'm like, it's bad enough when I want to come hang out with you and, like, the 10-year-old's in bed you know, watching TV, and I'm like, well, all right, I guess I'm going back downstairs. I don't make a big deal of it, and it's not a big deal, but that if I'm like, I'm going to come to bed, and now she's just staying here, I'm like, no, like, I'm going to just, well, go. It, I'm going to make a point, and I'm going to make a bet on the couch. Well, it blocks intimacy, <laughs> and not <laughs> yeah. just sex. You little cock blocker. <laughs> <laughs> not just sex, oh. intimacy Intimacy is more than sex. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um, okay. I have never agreed with her doing this. I find it highly inappropriate, and it has been the cause of some major blowouts between us. He bought her a queen-size blow-up mattress, pulls out some old blankets and sheets of mine that barely fit the bed, and puts it directly next to our bed on the floor so that it's touching, and because of the size... He has to rearrange all of our bedroom furniture, Mm. and we either cannot access the bedroom door or the bathroom easily. It's ridiculous, to say the least. Um, So basically, she goes on to say that she, you know, her kids don't co-sleep with her, that that she was sleep training them at two and three years old. Maybe it's like, we're going to, you know what? One's not enough. We're going to make a party. Like, if this is going to be the Brady Bunch, let's Brady Bunch this. I'm going to Brady Bunch them all into the same room and <laughs> well, eye like, for an eye. <laughs> do you remember when Angelina, you don't, you don't, okay, so Angelina Jolie, Jolie, Jolie. and uh, Brad Pitt, I remember reading an article a long time ago. Um, they're divorced now, right? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. Anyway, they had a, 
bed built so like all seven or eight of their <laughs> family slept together well in yeah, it. they have like a bunch of um adopted they, they had adopted a bunch of they kids, had right? twins which is cool yeah i think they had like three biological and the rest adopted i don't know they okay. had a huge from like family. all around the world yeah, right? yeah 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 that's cool but they had a huge bed okay but it, but that Built worked for, for them. Well, like, yeah, it would work for me too if I'm like, yeah. But you know what? I'm gonna go <laughs> snuggle up with a million bucks instead. <laughs> All right, <laughs> moving on. Um, okay, uh, lost my spot. Um, so she says my boyfriend has no legal custody agreement for his daughter. It's pretty much up to her mom, and when she will allow her to come and stay with her dad, and it's never consistent. So that's an issue. Okay. Inconsistency inconsistency is horrific for children. It gives them no sense of security or safety. Boundaries, consistency, consequences, repeat after me, everyone. She makes me repeat after her all the time, <laughs> and I don't like to. Yeah. So we don't have, so, okay, so we have two bedrooms for the kids in this house, and we moved into this house in May. My two kids who live with me 24-7 are being forced to share a bedroom slash bunk bed while the second bedroom sat there completely empty for months. That room was supposed to be for his daughter. She stays with us maybe one or two nights a month. It's been maybe a total of six times since May that she's actually stayed at our house. But there was no furniture in that room for her, no bedding, nothing. My boyfriend and I had a conversation in November that his daughter could share a room with one of the kids on the night she's here. And I agreed that's what we need, what needed to happen. Mm -hmm. He knows I don't agree with his daughter sleeping in our bedroom. I was tired of paying higher rent for a house and an extra bedroom that wasn't being used at all. And I was tired of my kids fighting with each other every other night because they they're sharing a room and waking up to each other, and my son is wa waking up before he needed to every morning because they have two different wake-up times because of school. It's just been a mess for my kids and very unfair. The bedroom was cramped with all of their stuff. They didn't have enough room, period. Plus their brother sister and... That would be very... Could you imagine, like, sharing a room with your sister no, growing well, up? No, well, and also then they never really get a break from one another. They're That's always right. around one another. And are you done reading? Because I've already got some no, ideas and situations. I have more. Okay, you keep reading. Do you want me to keep going? You keep reading. Okay. So I moved my daughter into the second room. I went and bought her her own bed, another dresser, and shelf. The following week, my boyfriend and his daughter flipped out and acted like I did this all behind his back, which was not the case at all. She just wasn't happy about it because she wanted the bedroom for herself, yet refused to sleep there. Right. And he took her side. As usual, I reminded him, we pay the rent on the house and we make the rules because we are the parents. The kids don't make the rules. Amen. Amen. Since his daughter, since then, his daughter has stayed with us two times and still continues to sleep in our room. And it's been a fight every single time. During couples counseling, the counselor, quick, counselor quickly backed me 100% and told him it's highly inappropriate on many levels and that on top of everything else, it's potentially legality a legality issue as well. I'm assuming this is hinting at sexual misconduct issues that can arise. He yeah, made the point there yet, but. He made the point to keep in mind that she is an 11-year-old right. girl prepubescent and he's a 40-year-old man, and I'm a grown woman who's not the biological mother. I'm assuming this is the counselor. Mm -hmm. He stressed that it's highly inappropriate and that it's setting a bad example and not establishing boundaries. My boyfriend's defense was and always is that she has anxiety and doesn't want to sleep by herself. Just as I have told him, the counselor explained to him that this is only contributing to her anxiety and making it worse. Right. He said this needed to. Sh he, uh, he said this needed to have stopped the counselor. I'm sh this should have stopped five or six years ago. Yet here we are, and as a father, they're not setting any rules or boundaries and just allowing it to continue. The bunk bed is still in my son's room and has a mattress, pillow, sheets, blankets, everything. I said to the counselor, if she's not happy staying in there then my boyfriend can buy a trundle bed and put it in my daughter's room yes. and she can stay there when she comes over. My boyfriend's response, nothing, just crickets. 
His daughter is coming over this weekend to stay the night, and I fear that he will just allow her to come sleep in our bedroom again, and I refuse to allow this to continue any longer. Here's the question. (laughs) How would you handle this? How do I bring it up to him before she comes over? It obviously needs to be discussed and handled before then. Any advice is appreciated. Thank you kindly. Oh, I wish I would have written a lot of this down, but I would didn't. you like but to I, no? Read but I've got no. Um, Go for okay, it. Okay, so the legality thing. I think that's pushing a boundary. I think that's taking it too far. Where do you think the, it's a shock value? Like trying the counselor is trying to shock him. Yeah, into but like, I also don't think that's the way to get people to do things. You mm-hmm. know, it's mm-hmm. not there. Don't make that a thing. Don't even talk about that honestly, because once something like that gets talked about, it becomes a thing. You know, yeah. and. You don't ever want the other kids to hear about that and go run off and tell someone else. And now all of a sudden, like, there's this stigma around your house that doesn't really exist, but it's all just because it got talked about in the first place. Um, The kind of, the one thing that I am hearing here that is like, well, that's a good thing, is she said that the the girl's only there, the daughter's only there four to six times a, a month, right? Which, okay, like, you know, we talked about the intimacy thing a little while ago, like, uh, you know, okay, so maybe you're missing out on four to six times a month <laughs> of intimacy. At least this, at least the daughter's not with you guys all the time. Does it make it right? No, but at least this isn't like his biological daughter who lives with them 24 seven. And now this is like just a thing. Like, you know, now you just have the three of you in this room constantly. Um, another fix that I see to this is, um, you know, you've already had your two kids sharing a room and that's kind of an awesome thing, like, but not at all because they don't want to be around each other, you know. Like, well, like they need their, sexes. their opposite they need sex. They need their, s- they need their own room. space. So, mm-hmm. is it really awesome? No, not at all. The kids are bummed. What you could do is take that bunk bed or, like you said, the trundle bed and put it in the other room, and then maybe your daughter has to share a room with his daughter when she's there. But for most of the time, they have their own room. You yeah. know, the, the, the biological kids, you know, and that's great. The other thing that you could do is set it up, you know, or leave it how it's set up in just the times that the stepdaughter is there, your son and your daughter share a room. Like, I know it's not the ideal, but if it's like we can't come to any other terms and they're so stuck in their way that she has to have her own room and you guys can't work that out, like, okay, like, again, you guys are the ones who pay the rent. You're the ones who set the who set the mood, you know, or the rules, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm reading. Set the mood with the love, um, anyway. Um, but you're the one who basically is like, okay, well, you know, these four or six times a month you guys share. But ideally, it would be putting the two girls in one room, and they share a room when they're there or, you know, whatnot. Yeah, I have something to insert as a stepchild myself. Oh, you're still a stepchild. I'm still, but welcome back. So when I would visit my dad, I did. I never lived with my dad full time. It was only I saw him on like holidays, like spring break, Christmas right. break, Thanksgiving break, the summer times. I'd go stay for a month. So I'd go down there for like a week at a time, as the school schedule allowed, and then I'd spend most of the summer there. But they had a room for me, but it wasn't my stuff. So it was like a girl's room. My stepmom had it painted pink and it was, was that girly. For you? I don't know. But let me tell you, like, I always felt like a visitor or a guest mm-hmm. in my dad's home. I never felt like that was my home. I never felt like it was even my space or my room. You just never really got truly comfortable, huh? No, because... um. I, well, one, I was never allowed to bring anything other than clothes to that house for my mom's house. Like, it was very weird. Um, Leave your socks at the door. Yeah. And, like, my it was issues if my mom ever sent me, like, a care package. Like, that was issues. So, basically, like, I could come with, like, clothes. And even then, my stepmom had different clothes. Like, you, I could show you pictures of how my hair and I was dressed down there. Anyway. Like the real boy you are. Yeah. I had like big floofy um, shoulders. Did like, you? Like, <laughs> and like like um, headbands with like a giant bow. 
right you were either. Like <laughs> as like an eight year old, like ten year old, like Annabelle's dresses age. Dresses with polka dots dresses and stuff. Dresses with polka dots yes. and like white shoes. Like, did you have the white knitted gloves? Yes. Did you? Like I was dressed, and that's not who I was or how I was, but that's kind of what it. was provided for I me. I kind of so want to see those pictures. <laughs> so in my my brother too. So. My Your brother had fluffy hair and, and bows and, and polka dot dresses? You should see. Some I got pictures. her brother into a dress once. Wait, no, I got Richard into a dress once. Yeah, not my brother. For our wedding. He anyway. Was Mrs. Peach. Um, so me. my point to this is, is um, and it always, I just felt like a guest as a stepkid to feel like a guest. And so my advice in this situation, and this is someone who's in our blended life support group online. So she's got tons of feedback from other members of our support group. It's on Facebook. You can join it. It's private group because we don't want lucky loos who are just going to cause problems, right? Um, so it's private. You can um, ask to join. And it's cool because everyone helps each other out. But one thing that was brought up, and I also want a second, third, and fourth, is that if you you need to give this child, even if she's there a handful of times a week, a space that she can call her own. So if it's the top bunk of the bed, maybe she could pick out the comforter, the pillow, mm. um, a stu- keep a stuffed animal there, have like a poster. Um, if there's, you know, keep a book, like let her keep a couple things. It doesn't have to be overboard, right? Like make it, s- make it, conform to the situation she doesn't live there full time give but her uh, like her own side of the closet maybe yeah like know? give her Keep space her that is hers it doesn't have to be a lot because she's not there a lot and that's understandable and reasonable but if you want her to maybe not be so anxious and want to stay next to dad in your room you know help her by giving her her own space making it her own um, letting her pick things out, keep some clothes there. Um, and like I said, a, like something to connect with, a book, a stuffed animal, some um, craft stuff. I don't know what it is, but something that... you mention that a Debbie Gibson poster? Water bottle? Oh, poster. Water bottle. You had the water <laughs> bottle too? <laughs> and the headband? <laughs> um, wow. But um, yeah, make sure she's got like a toothbrush she can leave there. Like, let her not feel, like, try to help her not feel like a guest. Like, if she's feeling anxious and she's feeling a certain way, I think you there's things you can do to help her out of your room. Um, uh, also, it would just be a hard boundary. Like, um, I, if my 11-year-old was sleeping, I don't care if they were with us. It's just not, it's not appropriate for their age. Like, you shouldn't have to... Um, break a sleep cycle with a, you do that with a two-year-old, not an 11-year-old. Yeah, like after, after, after eight, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like the weaning time where it's like, all right, eight's kind of like the weaning time, the weaning time (laughs) where it's like, all right, it's time to start like getting it down to by the time you're 10, this isn't happening anymore. We're not doing overnights. Yeah. Or, Um, or, you know, showers, you know, I mean, I know same sex showers go on, you know, a long time. (laughs) Don't laugh at me. You're the one who just took a same-sex <laughs> shower the other day. Yeah. You know, with with Last your 10-year-old. With your 10-year-old? No, but I mean from time to time. But at a certain point in time, it becomes like, all yeah. right. You know, and I and it's probably about eight years old that, you know, I started <laughs> weaning my son <laughs> off the, the shower time, you know. It's like, okay, by the time, you know, he was about nine years old, you know, we weren't showering together anymore. You... Anyways, <laughs> I I can't make inappropriate jokes because it's not that funny. It wasn't like that inappropriate, but just being silly. Yeah. Anyways, so I think that this is, but I want to get to her question. So obviously, we're on the same team as like should not be sleeping. You need boundaries. Help her get out of the room. Maybe make some space for herself. Um, and I do think it's great to have a plan before you're in the moment because there's nothing worse than arguing in front of all the kids or having to deal with a situation so it's so smart of you to want to address this with your significant other before she comes over and I think that's great and my advice and I wrote this in to her actually on our our um, support group page but I think when you're addressing someone else's kids or a sensitive situation, you always want to address it as a teammate. So 
I mean, she's like, how do I bring this up? I would say I would come to you if this was our situation and be like, I know Susie's coming this weekend to stay the night. Can we make a plan for sleeping? Because I don't want our time with her. You could bribe him with something. You could. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like, come at it like a teammate. Like, let's pizza. create a plan. I like pizza. Together. Right. Let's work this out together. What are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? And and tell him, like, I want our time with her to be drama free, like, happy, not having to argue or create a confrontational. Yeah. Or like, let's just you just want her to be together. comfortable and that's going to help ease some of that anxiety yeah. and everything else. Yeah. Here. And be like you want to be his teammate. You don't want to, to talk down to him or accuse him or. You're, it's not this or that, it's an and situation. So it's not like me and my kids do this and your kid doesn't. It's more like how can we do this together for our family? What were the ages of the kids again? So the daughter's 11, 11 right. and then four and six. Four and six. So a I while believe. ago, we talked about different things for the kids. And one of the things that came up were the different colored dishes. You know, when mm. we were talking about different dishes, but that could be a fun thing that would, it'd be cheap. It'd be fun. It'd be easy to do. And I was asking because like each kid have their own color, have their dishes. own color. Yeah. So if it was something you implemented, like, um, and take all three of the kids at the same time, don't go take the two kids and pick out the dishes that his daughter's going to get. But while she's there an activity you guys could do. Is, I mean, even something as simple as going to the dollar store and picking out. Yeah, plastic. Own, yes, all their plastic little that, like cups and, and plates and silverwares and all that. And let them all pick out their own color. But that's one thing that she would have at the house that would be hers that none of the other kids have. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, and we use the purple plates only for Susie when she's here visiting. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I think that's a great thing. I Yeah, just make little ways where she feels like it's her home and maybe she will calm down and not be anxious and you know um just as much as she comes into the room at night because she's going to to try to be like I had a bad dream I'm lonely I'm scared I'm whatever like dad needs to get up all night. it's gonna be a couple it's gonna sleepless be, it's nights. gonna be a while yep yeah and take her back like yep. you just have to be consistent even and if he, taking even if her he back. lays there until she falls asleep with her gets up you know and it might happen a few more times but you know, yeah. be consistent with it. And if you don't start breaking the cycle now, the habits now, we're going to What are you going to do, 17? You know. No, it's going to be. Daddy issues. 36 and, you know, living off on your own and still having these types of issues. Anxiety issues at night. Right. Another thing might be good is to get, um, like, I have the Calm app, app on my phone. And I know, like, sometimes when we're staying away from our home I will put that app on and it's just like calming like rain or it makes me not sound so. waves or but like maybe having like a sound like a white noise or like um something that can help soothe her too as she's going to sleep in her in a different space other than your room you know like set it up maybe there's cool lights um on the ceiling that are stars that are projected, you know, make it like a, a f make the space she's going to stay in fun. And I'm sure the other kids would love that too. So it's a win-win for everyone. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but I think that when you address it with your significant other and any difficult issue, I just want to underline and underscore this again, come in it like you're a team, you know, you're, we're in this together. Let's right. figure it out together. I'm on your side. I'm not the enemy. I want to do this with you for our family because I love you so much. Love you so much. Okay. All right, you guys. That was a fun one. We covered a lot of a lot of stuff on this one, right? Yeah, it's a long one. If you guys have questions or situations you want to hear us discussed, if you want to join our podcast and be a guest, if you want your family to be featured, we're getting back into... Do you want to leave us those five-star reviews? You want to do that? You want to win this book? Start engaging with us, guys, and um, we're excited you're here. And the YouTube people know if you type, yeah, never mind all that. If you type on YouTube, I will type back. We yeah. will always respond to you guys. Yep. Thank you guys for being here. Thank we are the you. Blended Life, and we will see you guys next week. Bye, you guys. Bye.